I'm certainly interested to hear what the two keynote speakers have to say, Hans Klevers and Rudolf Jenisch, and they always come up with new things, exciting things. But in general, there is a quite emphasis on, tot on pluripotency mm -hmm. and quite an emphasis on uh, neurectodermal and endodermal differentiation. So I'm interested to see what's going on there. And I hope that there will be some mechanistic understanding in the process of reprogramming and uh, in the process of differentiation, how much this is tied up with uh, epigenetics mm -hmm. and chromatin. Mm -hmm. Hope that these aspects uh, will be addressed. Okay. There are different things that, that you have to consider. One thing is the pluripotential cells that you get from, derived from embryos. Mm -hmm. This, of course, in, in human is, is a tremendous issue in this country and in other countries. And then there are the uh, alternative ways to reprogram cells to a pluripotent state. Now, as long as the real pluripotent cells, the ones that have been derived from the uh, embryo, can't fulfill their potential, I think we're not going to be very successful with the alternative pluripotent cells. So there we still have to do quite a lot. We have to do quite a lot with the pluripotential cells, how to get them into functional neurons, muscle cells, and, and so on. And a lot of this is because we don't think as development biologists. We have a dish and then we just push the cell into a neuron. And then we're surprised that they're not functional long terms. They look like neurons, they have a lot of features of neurons, but they didn't get all the information on the way, like communicating with other cells during differentiation and so on. There's a lot we have to understand. One problem is that the cells that kind of keep the organ alive, functional, they don't, mostly don't divide in a symmetric way. Mm -hmm. They just divide asymmetrically. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's important to have a phase where you get more of these cells, and mm -hmm. more you get of these cells when they divide symmetrically. These are things one also has to understand. Like the very primitive neural stem cells, they are dividing symmetrically, so you can get a lot of them, you can keep them like a cell line, and you can use them. Mm -hmm. But of others, these conditions have not been established. So if you would like to get these most primitive ones, this still has to be worked out. Mm -hmm. These days, it's extremely exciting, is that you can use these technologies to get cells from patients which have a genetic disease. You can take a patient cell or cells of a group of patients and then reprogram them to pluripotency and then you ask, what is wrong with these cells in a way from getting to, from a pluripotential cell to a differentiated neuron, for example? Mm -hmm. How, what can you understand? What is this disease telling you in the dish? And then can you use this to screen for drugs? So I think in the closer future, we're going to see more of drug development mm -hmm. than transplant, transplanting cells mm -hmm. in, into, into patients. And this is quite exciting right now. If you look at all the top journals, they're, they're publishing all these disease models, wonderful disease models, which wouldn't have been possible with trying this just with, uh, with patients. Getting a better understanding about what is termed tumor stem cells mm -hmm. is something that might actually help us to develop therapies because here we have uh, the problem that once we uh, deal with the tumor, we might not be able to attack the actual stem cells. And once uh, you have the uh, tumor forming again, uh, you just have the same problem, and maybe even worse. If we better understand the tumor stem cells and can attack them directly, mm -hmm. then we might have a chance to really to deal at least with a, with a group of, of tumors. I think even right now it's quite clear how things will develop during the next few years. There are papers out there by Marius Vanek from Stanford who has not reprogrammed cells from a fibroblast state to pluripotency and then differentiated them, but he did direct reprogramming from a fibroblast to a neuron. Mm -hmm. 
There was a paper three years ago by uh, Doug Melton's lab in Nature where he reprogrammed in vivo. That was like a taste of what is going to come, I think. Reprogrammed in vivo, that was exocrine uh, pancreatic cells into better cells. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we can expect, I think, over the next few years is that a lot more will be done in terms of this direct reprogramming. And a lot of things will develop into in vivo reprogramming. Mm -hmm.